Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. We've had a bit of a break, but we're back, me and Benji, with the Mega Transfers Podcast. There might be some more that are announced after we record this. We'll do ad hoc podcasts covering that as we need to. As usual, this show is supported by our show partner, LaCole. First off, Benji, UAE, Almeida through 2026. Is Almeida, in your view, the best GC prospect that was available in this transfer window? Who I think it's definitely one of the better ones out there because we've had, for example, Vlasov available. We have Thomas available, but obviously Thomas is not in the ballpark of being a prospect anymore for the future. So, and Almeida has a future ahead of him. We know that from the last years that he rode. Last year, he had fourth in the Giro after a wonderful performance throughout three weeks. He started off very well with some trial and kept it up with support of the team off quick step the entire way through this year he goes to the Giro he's in a bit of a mixed leadership position where on paper and in the media and so forth it's Almeida but the first climbing stage that starts he kind of bottles it himself but the team also doesn't completely support him from that point onwards at all which I somewhat understand because if you lose four minutes and a half on the first uphill test I would be like okay perhaps I wouldn't support you either after that but he came back from that and ended up having one of the better third weeks of the entire Grand Tour when it comes to GC riders. I think twice second up in Imera and Segariala after Bernal and the other one Yates. So two great performances there and his time trial at the end as well. So the three-week performance for Almeida seems to be better this year than last year because last year he was losing time in the third week. Now he was gaining time on people and he still finished sixth after having a terrible first week, basically. So I'd say that that's his benefit, that he has a consistency over three weeks right now to say that he's a good GC rider and is still very young, 23, so is likely to grow from this point onwards. Now, the opposing point is, the one that we've spoken about quite a few times this year, he doesn't win much. He's won one race and it's the ITT of his country, which is... And sees I, I almost count. never count them. They don't count. <laughs> yeah. So I'm waiting for a victory. and. It's a bit Kelderman-like right now, despite me thinking that he has more potential to win one than a Kelderman. He has so many top 10s in stages this year. It's crazy. Like UAE Tour alone, four top 10s at the UAE Tour. Uh, Tirreno Adriatico, three top 10s. Catalonia, three top 10s. But he's quite quick, but I think it's a great signing for UAE. I'd assume for, it's through 2026, so he'll be... Now, That's a while, right, to bet on a rider? Yeah, he'll be 28 when it finishes. I think it's fine. Um, surely they'll have clauses and insurance if he gets injured or crashes mm-hmm. out or whatever. And I, I think he's the best GC prospect of the, in this transfer window. I think, say he develops into his full potential and he could have been a threat to Pogaccia at the Tour de France, well, you've now signed him. So yep. <laughs> it's, it's like Port, <laughs> Port being on Froome's team. And even if he doesn't hit that top, top potential, Benji, as a domestique, yeah. he's still going to be excellent for Pagacha. I think Pagacha had a domestique issue still in the tour, Almeida. I think, like, if I'm thinking of who could actually shred a GC group or really thin it out and do a long pull, Almeida's one of those riders. And how much is he on? It's got to be over $8 million minimum total for the total contract that's probably being conservative as well so i think that's a fine signing um you know if you uh, are you disappointed from like a almeida's palmares perspective benji because i mean he didn't get much leadership clear leadership well, he actually did get leadership at the Giro last year at mm-hmm. quick step he's going to get even less opportunities at at uae or are they going to split him and now you have Perinis, nice, mm-hmm. almeida Tirreno, adriatico pagacha actually it I think that his opportunities rise a tiny bit because on first note, you'd expect, well, his opportunities are lower because Pogacar is there. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, at Quickstep, he did have support in the Giro, but the support wasn't insane this year, for example. Last year, he had decent support throughout the three weeks, but he doesn't have the climbers in that team to support him all out for that grand tour. Now, he didn't get the Tour de France at any point at Quickstep, and I don't think that's going to happen at UAE either. But the difference is that I think he has more support in the Giro than this time around at UAE. And next to that, I expect him to be leader at one Grand Tour, likely the Giro, and be supportive of the likes of Bogatran and another Grand Tour. But 
Then we hear news from, I think, Piper last week in a, a Velo News article where he was speaking about the future of Pogacar. They're planning that out. And most likely he's defending his title at the Tour de France next year. I would personally expect him to do the Vuelta after that, but apparently that's not really planned. Apparently the plan is to have a year somewhere in the future, next three years or something, where he does the Giro and the Vuelta. And if Pogacar does the Giro and the Vuelta, then that does offer an opportunity for someone like Almeida to step in and take the Tour under his control. So Pogacar seems to be of the idea that he doesn't want to be in that Tour de France mindset of the likes of a Froome, who went for every Tour de France every year, and he wants a year where he wants to do Giro Vuelta because that fits best to try and win both. And if that's the case, then it does offer opportunities for someone like Almeida, I think. And you look at, you know, Rafael Mike is about to get GC leadership at the Vuelta in this weekend in yeah. the UAE. So Almeida is better than him. So he should get some opportunities. He's just, if he wanted to win the Tour de France and that was his lifelong goal and he wanted to maybe get paid even more if he took a bet on himself, then this probably isn't the, the right place. But I don't think it's, yeah, I think it's fine. And as I've thought about it more, I think he will get, should get a lot of opportunities because honestly, UAE are not really a good team. Apart wow. from apart from Pagacha, <laughs> they barely win any World Tour races. They've got one other World Tour win with Dombrowski. Okay, you've got some Ulysses True. Slovenia wins gifted by Tade Pagacha to him. They're not a good team outside of Pagacha. They're, I would say Israel Startup Nation, better team than UAE if you take Pagacha out of the equation, which is a big if. The point is they're trying to, I think, win some other races. 